Welcome back. Spring is upon us. So exciting, isn't that? Like, just to think about that. Spring. Uh, yeah. Spring is here. And while most of us are ready to enjoy some warmer weather, with it also comes something we may not want, and that's bugs. Yeah, Mikey is so excited about this <laughs> segment, let me tell you. But it's that time of year when all the creepy, crawly critters come back out to play. And you've probably been hearing a lot about the return of the cicadas this year. But it turns out that might not be the bug that will actually be bugging us the most this spring and summer. So joining us now is Todd Sherbondi. He is a certified arborist with the Davy Tree Expert Company. Todd, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about these cicadas because we've been hearing a lot about brood X. It's supposed to be a really bad year for them, uh, but Western Pennsylvania may not see them like the other end of the state, right? That's true. Uh, actually, going further into the southern end of the state, uh, Pittsburgh may not be impacted as much as we think. Some of the areas going a little further east down into maybe Philadelphia, even to Washington, D.C., those are the areas that are really going to have the problems. But Realistically speaking, insects don't pay attention to property lines or, or county lines, I guess, as we had talked about. They could be a potential issue going into some of our areas as well. Yeah, now they, they don't bite, right? I mean, for me, it's just the sheer size of them that, <laughs> that scares me. A lot of the insects that are out there, uh, well, the, the cicadas particularly, don't have mouth parts that, that actually will bite or sting you. So even though they're foreboding and, and they're noisy little critters, they, they pose no uh, real issue or, or danger to humans, quite frankly. And do they do property damage? And I would call it brood X, but John Shumway has told me you really should call them brood 10 because that's a, it, a Roman numeral, yeah. right? <laughs> right, right. I call it brood X also. I kind of okay. think of it as more of a just a foreboding type of uh, thing. You know, that X is got, you know, kind of uh, uh, deadly, but you know, at the end of the day, they, they do cause some property damage, and a lot of people say, you know, what kind of trees do we need to look at w that are going to be the issue? Particularly the newly planted trees, the younger trees, they're the ones that struggle the most with this type of, of issue uh, because what the, the insects actually do, the cicadas actually do, is they'll damage some of those uh, more succulent growth uh, portions of the plant. So whenever they do the damage, the trees have a harder time of, of recovering from that, as opposed to some of the older trees that are a little more established, they have an easier time of, of recovering the damage that, that does occur. Yeah, and it's not just cicadas that we have to look out for this year. Beetles are coming, Japanese beetles. Ugh. Yeah, Japanese beetles. We saw an, an emergence of Japanese beetles last year, um, and a lot of clients said, well, you know, I, I have, uh, I don't have a whole lot of issues on my property, but they're coming from my neighbor's property, which is certainly the case. Again, you know, insects and, and things like that, they don't particularly pay attention to property lines. So, you know, even though they may be on your plants, they could be over in your neighbor's property as well. We did see some damage from them last year, especially after that hard frost and then kind of the dry summer that we had. Trees, shrubs, uh, most of the plants were really stressed out. And, and how do you get rid of those? But I know we have two more uh, little bugs that we want to talk about, but how, yeah. do you, how do you fend off Japanese beetles? What's the best thing? The easiest thing to do is to get a trap or use uh, some type of soap. You can dry out their, the uh, insect, the cuticle of the, of the insect, and actually uh, slows them down. The traps are the best. Um, usually that, that they drop into there. The problem is you have to empty them on a regular basis though. So that can be a little bit of a, of a task, maybe something for the kids to do later in the day. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Yeah, get a kick out of that. All right, so we yeah. also have to look out for something called an emerald ash borer. Now, what is that? Emerald ash borer is something that we've seen for several years, started kind of uh, over in the Detroit area, moving this way. Um, we saw it on the on the western side of the state, excuse me, for moving across the state going eastward. Emerald ash borer, about the size of a dime, uh, like a little green fly kind of buzzing around you. They attack uh, predominantly one species of tree, and some of the videos showing there is, is really good video. They bore into the, the vascular tissue or the, or the food uh, transporting, water transporting mechanisms of the tree, and they can girdle or, or kill off or choke the tree out. So they're pretty, pretty nasty little guys. All right, one last one that we want to talk about it, the tent caterpillar, which, I mean, caterpillars become butterflies. How menacing could this be? 
Down's not like the, it's that bad. Uh, some people actually confuse this with bagworms. Uh, the two are a completely different species, but they, they do. Uh, they're both caterpillars of Lepidoptera. The unfortunate thing is that the eastern tent caterpillar uh, is actually a pretty devastating insect, unlike uh, the cicadas. They can cause some serious damage further up into areas like St. Mary's. I was traveling a couple years ago. There was some serious damage on the trees up there. Uh, a lot of times the trees will recover the damage, but the unfortunate thing is the more food producing mechanism that you destroy the leaves of the tree, the, the harder time it is for the tree to recover. So. Okay, I was wrong. Wow. They are a menace we should yeah. be worried about. Those are some big tents there. Yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> Thank you for educating us. We really appreciate it. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Uh, cicadas are low in calories as well. So oh, if boy. You're going down oh. That road. <laughs> we'll tell John <laughs> We will. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. We appreciate I it. I was looking forward to summer, but not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, summer will still be good. All right, once again, our thanks to certified arborist Todd Sherbondi with the Davy Tree Expert Company. A lot of good education there. Yeah, I, I agree, I guess. <laughs>